Has Onefinity finally done it? Have they finally created the right balance of products to be the undisputed front runners among hobbyist level CNC machines? Well, let's dig into it. For those of you not tracking the recent announcements made by Onefinity during Cyber Week, they have added a number of products that bring their offerings on par with some of the other hobbyist CNC manufacturers. Specifically, they broke up their product line into three tiers, creating a similar structure as Carbide 3D. They now offer an affordable entry-level machine called the Original, a set of slightly more expensive machines called the Pro Series, and a suite of higher-end machines called the Elite Series. In doing so, I believe Onefinity has lowered the barrier to entry for hobbyist CNC users across the board. So has Onefinity really created three entirely new machines? Well, of course not. The Elite series is definitely new and was introduced about a year ago. But the other machines are essentially upgraded variants of existing machines. They rebranded the original Onefinity X35 as the original model, which is still driven by the BuildBotics controller and is nearly identical to the machine that they released almost three years ago now. Next, they rebranded the X50 as the Pro Series, but they dramatically increased its potential by adding high torque stepper motors, the Z20 heavy duty Z slider, and they finally made drag chains standard. Look, I simply don't know why drag chains were not standard on the original machine. It is a basic piece of hardware that every other machine on the market has, and it was hands down the most requested upgrade to the original machine. So much so that a vibrant third-party aftermarket has emerged to fill the gap. It is simply mind-boggling why something so simple and so useful was not part of the original design. But hey, after a few years, they are now offering them standard on the Pro and the Elite models, and we finally have a sanctioned and a warrantied option for the original model. So all that I have to say about that is, it's about time. So what makes this move so important? Well, simply put, this puts Onefinity in the unique position of being the only company offering a robust, direct drive, entry level machine. A very compelling mid tier in their Pro Series, and a closed loop solution at their highest tier. As far as I know, they are the only company offering a closed loop desktop CNC solution. Period. This absolutely sets them apart from their competitors. Going one step further, they are the only company that I am aware of that offers a professional grade controller with their machines. Nearly all other companies are still using Gerbil based controllers born out of the RepRap movement of the late 2000s. Now, don't get me wrong, Gerbil controllers are super solid but they simply don't offer some of the advanced features like closed loop and bit changing like the Masso controller does. So what does this mean for the industry? Well, this only benefits the consumer and creates a level of competition that hasn't existed until now. This puts a tremendous amount of pressure on Inventables and Carbide 3D. Both Carbide and Eventables responded to the initial release of the Onefinity with massive upgrades to their lineup. But both of them have failed to keep their lowest tiered machines up to date with some of the more interesting features that the Onefinity offers. Inventables specifically has failed to keep the original X-Carve up to date with some of the most basic updates. It still sports belts and V-wheels in an era where other comparable machines offer linear rails and direct drive. Critically, the cost of the original x has gone up with no commensurate increase in the underlying machine's capabilities, rigidity, or controller capabilities. 
This is an interesting place to be in time and space. By contrast, Carbide 3D offers a whole series of Shape Oco machines starting at the very reasonable entry level price point of $1,700 going all the way up to $5,400. However, all the machines are still controlled with the now aging Gerbil controller, and as near as I can tell, all of the machines are still belt driven, which I think holds them back a little bit. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I don't own any of the Carbide 3D machines or any of the Inventables machines, so I cannot speak directly to their capabilities, or more importantly, any of their limitations. But I have owned an X-Carve in the past, and I do have direct experience with the differences between direct drive and belt drive. If you can, I believe direct drive is a better long-term solution in terms of reliability. You simply don't have to continuously adjust the tension of the belts and make sure that your V wheels are properly aligned and properly tensioned. So, where does this leave us in terms of overall value? Well, that is somewhat subjective and difficult to make a clear recommendation. Everyone has their own requirements and needs. Further, if you watched my previous video about the hidden costs of CNC, I will link it above and below, you will know there are a ton of extra things required regardless of which machine you purchase. That said, based on my analysis, the Shape Oco machines are probably the best overall value when comparing the upfront cost to the completeness of the offering. Out of the box, they come with everything you need to get started, even including a few end mills. By contrast, the Base Onefinity is missing important things like a wasteboard and some convenience things like a drag chain. These are all included with the base Shape Oco 4, which gives the Shape Oco a tiny edge on the cost front. However, the Onefinity has direct drive, so there are no belts or V wheels to deal with. In the end, the One Infinity will be more reliable and will be more accurate over time. So if that matters to you, then perhaps the One Infinity is the best value for you, even if it has a marginally higher startup cost. Looking forward, I see One Infinity and the communities built around the One Infinity machines offering amazing add-ons that will bring the Onefinity machine on par with professional machines that cost three to four times more. For example, having a closed loop machine with a high powered spindle and a tool changer for under $6,000 or so is an incredible deal that would have been simply unheard of just a year ago. So kudos to Onefinity for continuing to push the boundaries and continuing to innovate in a field that has become stagnant and comfortable with status quo. I look forward to their competitors' response and I look forward to all the innovations coming our way as consumers. Most importantly, I look forward to the next evolution of design software and truly making CNC easier for new users and beginners the same way that 3D printing has. If you are interested in the current state of design software with a direct head-to-head -head comparison of two beginner-friendly software packages, then I encourage you to check this video out right here. Thank you for watching, thank you for getting this far, and don't forget to be inspired.